What's up guys and welcome to Friday Flights, brand new Noctua Cooler Edition. So this, or what's inside this box anyway, is the brand new NH-U12A from Noctua. It's a 120 millimeter cooler and what they're hoping is one of their highest performing 120 millimeter coolers to date. It has seven heat pipes on it and only 158 millimeters tall and comes with two 120 millimeter fans. As far as mounting compatibility on the U12A, it's pretty universal with the exception of Threadripper. So that includes Intel high-end desktops on the 2011 and 2066 base sockets, as well as their consumer boards on 1155. AMD is supported on the AM3 and AM4 base sockets, as well as the FM1 and FM2, although it does say the backplate is required. So I'm not sure if that's an additional backplate that doesn't come with this box, or if it's the standard backplate that comes with every single AMD motherboard out there. We'll have to see. There are a couple of claims on this box that I do want to pay close attention to. For starters, Noctua claims 100% RAM compatibility on all AM4 and 1150 base sockets. RAM height is an issue that I've ran into on a couple of my more recent air cooler reviews, so I'm curious to see if they've solved this. Maybe I'll throw a couple of my Dominator Platinums on there. Secondly, this little sticker right here claims 140 millimeter air cooler performance in a 120 millimeter form factor. So how well does this actually perform? Only one way to find out. Let's open the box and get this thing installed. I think I've said this on the show before, but if you've never opened a knock to a cooler before, you are kind of in for a treat. They're kind of like the BMWs of unboxing experience. So first we've got all of our mounting hardware, thermal paste, cables, all in this nice box right on top. That opens up and everything is in its own individual baggie. So we've got our thermal paste, we've got our voltage reducers, fan splitters, uh, knock to a badges, nice metal badge that you can put on the front of your case if that's still something you're into. Uh, as well as all the rest of our mounting hardware, uh, long screwdriver with a nice good handle on it, uh, mounting backplate, baggie of screws, everything very, very neatly presented. And right below that we have the cooler itself, and it looks like the fans are already attached to it. So let's see if we can get this thing out of here. Which side is going to lift up, or does this just pop out? It just pops out. Look at that. So there is the unit itself. You can see the dual 120 millimeter, 25 millimeter thick fans. These are the Noctua NFA 12-25s. Uh, PWM control, there's a pair of them, and like I said, inside the box is a PWM splitter. Uh, beautiful looking tower, you can see all seven of the heat pipes poking through the top. Uh, very neatly crimped as well, there's nothing that's really, there's nothing that looks out of place with this cooler. On the bottom here, you can see all seven heat pipes again going through each side of the fin stack, and then that nice bright mirror finish cold plate on the bottom. Just a beautiful looking cooler. And we are going to install this Noctua cooler onto my Ryzen 7 1700 test platform. This has a Gigabyte X370 Gaming 3 motherboard, 16 gigabytes of Corsair LPX Vengeance at 3000 megahertz, and that XFX RX 580 graphics card, which I still don't know if I love or hate the design of. The cooler on this bad boy is the Deepcool Captain 240 ARGB. It is a fantastic all-in-one liquid cooler, 240 millimeter, uh, with those addressable RGB fans uh, up on top, as well as the RGB pump. Uh, I am gonna show the numbers from this cooler just for comparison's sake, but really we're just looking for the performance numbers out of the Noctua today. So let's get this thing installed. Taking a quick look at the instructions, and they are indeed talking about the backplate that most people take off if you have a third-party cooler. So this is the AM4 stock bracket that comes on every AM4 motherboard, or AM3 if you have a slightly narrower set of screws on it. Uh, so yeah, it does require this, so don't throw that away. Here is the Noctua bracket that screws directly into the AMD stock backplate. Uh, the process was a little bit difficult and I couldn't film it as I couldn't get a pretty good angle of it, but this is what it looks like when it's all assembled. I do recommend putting this together outside of the case and then putting your motherboard back into your case as uh, there was not really a good way to hold the AMD bracket on there. There's a spacer under this that has to go through the bracket and then finally a screw. Uh, so not the easiest thing in the world to assemble unless the motherboard is laying flat on a, on a flat surface. But next up is the fun part. We're gonna go and put on thermal paste and get this cooler installed. So you are gonna need to remove the fans from the, uh, the cooler, which is pretty standard, I believe, on these. And just line up the two pegs and screw it tight. There, we got it. There we go. And last but not least are the fans. And right off the bat, you can see their first claim on the box was accurate. This fan doesn't even go over the first RAM slot, which means you can put whatever height RAM you want in there. There's no kind of height restraints or, uh, or problems. And I'm assuming this is gonna be pretty standard on any AM4 or Intel 1150 based motherboard. So go nuts. 
Boy, if ever there was a build that is not color matched, this is definitely it. We've got the red addressable RGB lights. We've got the Noctua brown fans. We've got the XFX graphics card that doesn't light up at all. We've got the red cables. We've got a whole bunch of other stuff. But looks aren't really the important thing in this. We're gonna look at performance. Let's see how she does. Testing on this today is gonna to be pretty straightforward. Really, there's no need to complicate it. Uh, first off, we're gonna grab an idle temp, which I can do since the system's been idling for about 10 minutes. Then we're gonna fire up CPU-Z and run the CPU stress test. That'll give us a standard rendering performance or overall high-end gaming performance on the CPU. Then we're gonna fire up Cinebench R20 and let that run two or three or four times until I'm pretty satisfied with the results I'm seeing. And that'll give us overall AVX performance. And like I said before, we're gonna be putting Noctua's claims of 140 millimeter air cooler performance in a 120 mil package to the test. I've gone ahead and overclocked this Ryzen 7 1700 to 4GHz at 1.41 volts. I've been running this system like this for quite a long time and it is rock solid stable at those numbers. First up, idle temp. Uh, chilly. This thing's dropping all the way down to about 29 degrees Celsius and sitting leveled off about 32. So pretty much dead on performance with the water cooler we had on earlier. Next up is CPU-Z, and we're just gonna saturate this CPU with uh, synthetic load out of its built-in stress test. All right, we seem to be leveling off right around 68 and a half degrees Celsius, trending towards 69, but uh, it's kind of bouncing back and forth between those two values. Uh, very, very impressive. Uh, that is only about two to three degrees warmer than we had on the water cooler once the water was fully saturated. And last but not least is Cinebench R20. This is an AVX workload and this should provide pretty much the biggest stress test that we could possibly throw at this cooler. Uh, we are gonna run this multiple times and take the max temp that we get out of all of the runs, but uh, I'm expecting some pretty good things out of this. Second run here, uh, and actually we got our best score that I've ever gotten on the CPU in our first run at a 3973. Uh, my previous high was a 3956, so, uh, Definitely not hampering the CPU in any way, shape, or form. So here's our third run. Uh, I don't think we're gonna need to do a fourth. We're pretty much leveling off right there. Uh, Hardware Info is reporting that we're hitting about 116 watts at full tilt, which is exactly what I would expect with this overclock. Yeah, I think we're gonna call it. Uh, we're hitting 74.3 degrees Celsius at full tilt. So again, very, very impressive at a four gigahertz overclock on a Ryzen 7 1700. Uh, now this cooler is $99. It is definitely a premium or a boutique air cooler, but you're still priced under a lot of 240 millimeter AIOs out there, definitely below the 280 mil. And uh, honestly, I'm having a hard time seeing any downsides to this thing. So there we go. Uh, pretty much the only differences I can find between the Noctua NHU-12A and a deep cool Captain 240 AIO is uh, about a four degree delta in max temps and a little bit more fan noise with the Noctua. But then again, we are running two additional case fans uh, in this configuration versus the deep cool. I just had the two case fans pointing straight out through the radiator at the top. Didn't even have a rear case fan installed. So there we go. Overall, I am very impressed. Phenomenal hardware quality as always from Noctua. The fans are honestly very, very silent, if not dead silent at an idle, and they're not offensive in any way when the system is ramped up, uh, even with the additional case fans needed over a water cooling system. Installation was very straightforward. As I said, again, I would recommend taking the motherboard out of the case to install this cooler, just for ease of use and comfort so you're not dropping screws and spacers into your case like I was when I was trying to install this thing vertically. The hardware quality is excellent. The looks are, well, it's the Noctua Brown, but some people like it and some people don't. And in fact, that's given me an idea to do a full Noctua Brown custom system. Let me know what you guys think of that idea down in the comments below. It is something I've been knocking around in my head for a while, but is it something you'd like to see? If you would like to pick up the Noctua NHU-12A or any parts that are inside the system for yourself, I will have Amazon affiliate links down in the video description. Everything you buy from there really does help this channel out, help me keep the lights on, and help keep content coming straight to you. That's gonna do it for me in this one, guys. Drop me a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and leave a comment to let me know what you thought of this video. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing, and if you'd like to financially back this channel, make sure to look me up on Patreon, where a $1 donation gets you access to my exclusive Discord server. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this one, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, I guess. I'm gonna go get another beer.